Woo! Yeah! What a ride! And we made it to the Cascade Kingdom! Sorry, still a bit amped up from capturing a power line. Must collect myself. There should be an old airship somewhere around here. Let's see if we can't find it. Hey everybody, it's Stone here, and welcome to the second episode of Let's Play Super Mario Odyssey. These purple things back here are currency. You'll see them around the different kingdoms, and they are very useful for things. There are different amounts of currency in every uh, kingdom, and each currency is different, so they don't add to the same pot of collectibles. Uh, each of these little markers is actually a teleport spot, as you'll see later on. This is an information overload <laughs> at the beginning of this game, but there's just so much cool stuff to do and talk about. Um, yeah, these each of these uh, flagpoles, uh, it does, I, I think it increases your health if you're damaged, uh, if you've taken damage, uh, just like it does in all other Mario games. I'm not too sure about that, so we'll, I guess we'll find out as time goes on. They also work as teleport spots for the map, and we can look at the map by pressing minus. And on the map, if we open up this menu, it's so cool. It's a little brochure, and there's a brochure, different unique brochure for every kingdom. And in the center of the map, you can teleport to, you can quick travel to um, different uh, checkpoints that you find. Um, checkpoint flags are called, uh, and you can also teleport to another place that will remain constant as we go throughout the game. And we're going to find that out, uh, what that is very soon. We'll read. I'll, I think I'll. I think I'll actually go through these every time that we get to a new kingdom because they are really nice and it's like awesome that it took time to go through the flavor text and put it in here like this. Cascade Kingdom, land of waterfalls and natural treasures. Fossil Falls, the last holdout of history. Population unknown, size tall, locals unknown, currency stone discs. That's what those purple things were. Really trying hard, <laughs> tried hard in my first playthrough not to call them purple coins because I mean even though they're basically purple coins. Uh, purple coins, I, I believe, are only in Mario Galaxy, and when I first saw that the, the reveal trailer for this game before they announced the title, I thought it was Mario Galaxy 3, and then I was kind of upset, but not complaining now, because this game is phenomenal. I still like Galaxy 1 better, though. Industry unknown, temperature 84 degrees, like a huge axe plant in the ground. See the rainbow? <laughs> A uh, tall drink of water. There are many waterfalls in the Cascade Kingdom, but the area known as Fossil Falls is a special one. There are a few sites in nature as grand as the millions of gallons of water pouring every second on this giant triceratops skeleton. I hope that's not where it originates from. Natural patterns of fossil. If you look very closely at stone walls, you will notice fossils mixed in. If think of it as nature's mosaic, and remember it always. Wow. Uh, the stone spire standing near the Great Falls has miraculously remained balanced upright in this position, presumably for eons. Of particular interest are the cubes of unknown material embedded in the stone. These cubes are the reason for the common theory that the spire somehow fell from the sky. While this theory is difficult to prove, it is equally hard to doubt when looking at this miraculous stone structure. The ancient wall. No ordinary cliff face, this structure was carved out, of pain, was carved out painstakingly over many long years by people unknown. The wall is composed mainly of fossils, and evidence suggests it has been broken many times, causing some to suggest that something is buried inside. Visitors are encouraged to explore the mysteries surrounding the Great Barrier, if they dare. The Prehistoric Tyrant. This is not Xenoblade X, this is not Xenoblade X, this is not Xenoblade X. The biggest draw for tourists to live in this... Or the biggest draw for tourists to this area is that dinosaurs still live here. Many people willingly put themselves at considerable risk for a glimpse of the ancient, terrible lizards. T-Rex, most terrible of all dinosaurs, can pulverize a boulder with a single blow. On the other hand, most people don't realize how much time they spend napping. <laughs> we have a little picture... Researchers believe this specimen is female. Oh, that's interesting. An old, odd structure. No one knows how a Bonneton-style structure got buried here. Monitors travel often, so they may have lived here in the past. It is a helpful landmark if you get lost, though. Old, but not as ancient as its surroundings. Three keys to the kingdom. Experience the glory of nature with the eye-popping Great Falls. See dinosaurs, prehistoric rulers of a bygone age. Uh, find treasures of the past tucked away everywhere you look. And a little crazy cap logo there at the bottom. These are so nice. I've never actually taken the time to read through an entire one before, and I think I'm going to do that for every kingdom that we get to because they're really nice, and I'm glad that they uh, add that much attention to detail in the game. There's so many things that need to be explained, but they also don't need to be explained. There are a lot of things that are just simple, and this game just wants you to play and have fun and explore, and it's just like... It, uh, it doesn't dwell on anything. It doesn't explain so much to you that you don't want to sit through menus. 
it is just jump in and have fun. And as we take control or capture this Chain Chomp here, as Chain Chomps take the form that they are least dangerous. Th th this game is probably the least dangerous Chain Chomps I've ever been. If we pull on it, we can shoot it in any, <clears throat> excuse me, certain direction. Shooting it in this direction, we can break that rock over there. But I think we should shoot it at the giant glowing rock beneath the mysterious stone spire. <laughs> that seems like the good thing to do. And after decades of collecting power stars, Mario decided to switch it up a bit. You got a moon, our first power moon. <sighs> Get used to saying moon throughout your journey if this is your first time playing <laughs> or watching someone play. And after that great stone tower has been standing for eons, we just knock it down. Uh, after you collect the story moon in the kingdom, it will show you a little preview, uh, preview, preview of the next moon that you're supposed to get, and that's what that was right there. Oh, we found a power moon. What a lucky break. This will come in handy to power the airship. Have you ever seen anything like it? Actually, no. I have not as a Mario player. I've never seen power moons. Um, there are story moons throughout each kingdom. Uh, there are not very many. As you can see in... Well, actually, story moons are different from the counter. If you look in the top left, we can see a counter for our coins, our currency, and the power moons. The power moons, uh, the empty circles, represent how many we have left before we can advance past the kingdom. And I will continue talking after this. Ah, there it is. This is what we were looking for. It's looking a bit more rough than I'd expected. Ah, uh, no, it's just an older model. I'm certain it can still fly. Let's give it a shot, shall we? Just throw me on that globe there. But story moons are not necessarily the moons that you need to... All the moons that you need to advance. Uh, story moons are just the moons that it shows you in previews and that you must collect. The other moons are up to you. There can be up to, I think, over a hundred moons in a specific kingdom. I don't remember the total moon count, the total unique moon count in the end of the game, but just know that you can have 999 moons, and we will talk more about that later, because it seems that our ancient, ancient Bonneton structure here is actually the ship that we need to power up with power moons. Huh. Nothing's happening. The power moon must not have given the ship enough energy. I wonder if we can find more around here. Oh, buddy, I'm sure that we can find plenty more. Not all power moons in a kingdom are unlocked and available to you the first time that you come through a kingdom. But there are <laughs> plenty. And I think I'm going to try to... I think I'm just going to try to explore around and have fun in uh, each episode or in each kingdom, and I'll find what I can find. I don't remember... I remember exact locations of a few power moons and collectibles, but not, like, a super ton amount. That's locked off to us for now. Uh, there's some currency down here. There's also different amounts of currency in each kingdom. It's not constant, just as the power moon count is not constant. There's 50 here, as we just saw right there. There's 50 total, and we already have nine. Start off thinking that currency must not be very hard to find, and then you get down to 47 out of 50 or 97 out of 100, and you just want to shoot yourself because you can't find the last three in every little crevice in the game. <sighs> there are not many frustrating parts of this game. It is extremely fun, and I'm complaining about literally nothing. We jump up here. Uh, there's another... Um, what are they called again? Checkpoint flag. <laughs> Checkpoint flag. I'm stupid. Top of the big stump. Uh, we jump over here. Actually, wait a second. I'm missing something up here, I believe. I don't remember the location of every single thing, so if I get a little mixed up sometimes, you know, don't blame me. Uh, well, actually, I mean, I guess you can blame me because it is technically my fault, but... This is a big game. This is a ridiculously massive game, but it's a lot of fun, so I'm going to have a lot of fun exploring it in, in this. This is actually my second playthrough of the game. Uh, I played through it once... Uh, just when the game came out, I kind of, like, degened it. Like, I played, I think, like, 15 hours uh, the first day I had it. And then, like, beat it. And then kind of put it... Well, I didn't really put it down. I got I got quite a bit of moons. And I actually did the, uh, like, secret 
levels and all the like challenging stuff in the end of the game, but I wasn't super into 100%ing it because the collectibles are a lot less important than they are in other 3D Mario games. Uh, they're a lot less tangible. Uh, let's take control of these chain chops here. And we can break this block over here because it looked like it had a little something shiny in it. There's a moon right there. <clears throat> As in Mario 64, Sunshine, and both Galaxy games, and I guess 3D World if you count. No, 3D World doesn't count. I don't care. It's technically a 3D Mario game, but it's not like these. Um, in, in the other 3D Mario games, if you collect a main collectible, uh, you typically are taken out of the level that you're in and then have to go back in and get another. They're like big deals big deals when you get them and there's not that many of them in each level. Uh, in this game, it is exactly the opposite. There, It's a big deal when you get one because it may mean that you can advance with the story. Also, you can collect things with Cappy. He's so awesome. Um, <clears throat> it's a big deal when you get one, but it's not such a big deal that you should be like taken out of the level, and it's a good thing that they didn't do that, because it wouldn't really make sense. Um, another checkpoint fly here, Stone Bridge. Now, we were actually supposed to break this break this down, and we could do it by taking control of that big chain chomp, but I see a cute little sleeping T-Rex that might want to help us. Goodness, look at the size of that thing. That's my pet. You will not talk bad about her or her weight. You actually can't capture it from the side. You have to capture it from its head. <sighs> Wake up a T-Rex, and you can play <laughs> as a freaking dinosaur in this game. If it's not already one of your favorite 3D Mario game, favorite Mario favorite games of all time, you might just have something wrong with you. Uh, you can break all kinds of boulders and stuff just by running into them. These little guys right here are infinite spawns, so if you kill them all, they just immediately spawn back. Uh, you can headbutt all these boulders and break them open. Uh, you can kill chain chomps. I don't know if I want to kill this one. Oh, well, I guess I did. Now I can run into this. You're sp <laughs> the great barrier wall that it was talking about. You need to break it open with something, whether it be the chain chomp or the dinosaur. Um, the dinosaur actually has a limited time on it. I think actually most captures do. Um, you can only control it for a limited amount of time until Cappy's like, no, I can't do it anymore because it's too powerful. And yeah, dinosaurs are pretty powerful. Did that, did that respawn? I guess it did. There's a cool trick you can do here where if you break this, there's like a trampoline here and you can jump up in the air and skip straight to the boss of the kingdom. But I don't want to do that. Yes, but it's too big. I couldn't hold on to it for any longer. Happy. Not making it easy to keep it clean here. Um, let's see. We can jump up there, but there's a more fun way to do it. See these things in infinite spawn. Um, that's the beauty of this game is that there, are, there is just <laughs> any way that you want to go about doing something, you can do it. It is insane. Uh, I believe. Well, I broke that big boulder, so I don't. Maybe we can't do this now. And we can't. Uh, if that big boulder was there, we could roll off of it. Let's actually jump down here. Uh, that's blocked off for now. If we go up here, you can see an 8-bit cat peach on the wall. The Stuff like this is hidden throughout the game. If you throw your hat at it, it'll usually give you a heart or coins or something else. Um, typical collectibles, there's Goomba Falls right there. That's so cool. The attention to detail in this game is just, just amazing. So let's get up here and collect these. We're already 28 out of 50 currency for this kingdom. That's pretty dang impressive, considering we've only been here for not very long. Uh, already the 31. All right, now for this. The Great Wall was hiding in 8-bit section, and if you go in this pipe... Oh my, we've gone flat and rather blocky. You can play as 8-Bit Mario in this game. It, it just keeps getting cooler. This game is so much fun, and honestly, after I after I played through it and you know did what I needed to do, I put it down and I didn't really think about it much, but now I'm just so glad that I decided to do this series on the channel because it's just so much fun. And I'm gonna have fun playing through it a second time, uh, knowing all the things that I can do with the controls and with the movement now. And also, in 8-bit mode, you can collect moons. It doesn't just have to be in 3D. 
and with a little 8-bit jingle to accompany it. Uh, each moon has a name, and there's actually a... Maybe we can't... Oh, accidentally, <laughs> accidentally took a screen cap. Uh, maybe we can't access it yet? I We cannot access it yet. Okay, that's interesting. I don't know when that becomes a thing, but there's a moon list. And there's some other lists that we need to keep track of, too. But if you get to the top of an area like this, you simply jump out. It is so simple and so fun, and there is just so much to do and look at. It's Oh, it's amazing. I bet you there's a spectacular view from atop that pole. Really? Well, we will just find out about that. Find it? Oh, there's a king heart here. Nice. That's what he was hinting at. Um, these If you take control of these two chain chops, you can actually you can break like all these rocks over here. I don't think there's any purpose to it yet. Uh, you can also break, like, that over there, stuff like that. There's nothing glowing, so I don't think we can collect anything from it yet. Usually if something is glowing, it means there's a moon hidden inside of it. Um, and none of this is glowing yet, so I think the game just kind of wants us to continue to the boss of the kingdom, and this can be a little finicky, trying to get the two chain chops to not interfere with each other. Break that, and we can cross... Rocky Bridge, you can kick these rocks around, sometimes they give you hearts, sometimes they give you coins. And we're here. What's this? You say you need to repair some silly old airship? Why, I could never part with any of my precious power moons. Sounds to me like someone wants to be a snack for my adorable chain chompykins. And here we are with the, with the mechanic that we learned throughout the kingdom. Now we're fighting an even bigger, badder version of the enemies we captured. Uh, if an enemy has a hat on, you actually have to hit it until the hat comes off, and then you can capture it. And this golden chain chomp, you just have to run away from her and then let it go. <laughs> Flies back into her face. Uh, this boss is actually really funny. She throws the chain chop at you. It's not difficult to avoid at all. If you kick the rocks around, you even have hearts to replenish if you take damage. Um, not a good idea to take control of it in a corner like that because she can hit you and knock you out of it, I think. She either knocks you knocks you out of the enemy or um, just does damage to you. Either way, probably not a good idea to do it in the corner because you can just... Ugh, her eyes are crazy when she's mad. Take control of the third time, and we can run away, and, ooh, it's a barrier, okay, let's go here, and let it go. And here we have in front of us, our first... Triple Moon. You got a multi moon, multi moon atop the falls. I actually thought it was called a triple moon. <laughs> Forgot it was a multi moon. That rolls off the tongue a little better. You've done it! And now we've got a multi-moon! It's as strong as three power moons combined. It should get the ship moving in no time. Let's see if we can't make this work. Throw me on that globe. And let's throw him at it. The Odyssey is restored. We have enough fuel to reach the Sand Kingdom. Let's go save those two. Why don't you take the helm? Just select Sand Kingdom and press A and we'll be off. That was horribly enunciated by myself. 
this is the overworld for this game. Uh, it's, the, it's like the... Yeah, it's, it's basically what I can say. is the overworld. Uh, we can go back to the Cap Kingdom if we want to. Uh, there are moons to collect there. I actually don't know if they're available yet. Um, there's also more we can do in the Cascade Kingdom, or we could advance to the Sand Kingdom. I don't want to go to the Sand Kingdom yet. Let's go back to the Cascade Kingdom and look around some. We actually haven't left it yet. If we go inside the Odyssey here... It's a nice little, nice little area. Doesn't really stack up to Rosalina's library or anything, but it's fun. It's cool. Uh, what are we playing on here in the... Are those snapshots from the game? I think they are. That's so cool. Little hat... <laughs> little hat coffee mugs. To be an old, ancient piece of junk that was completely disabled three seconds ago. It looks really nice on the inside now. Uh, here are the brochures for the kingdoms, I guess. Uh, yeah, more stuff is added uh, throughout the game. Uh, that you, you can buy things using coins and currency from each kingdom. Uh, we'll find out more about that later. And this little thing right here, we will find out more of, about later. We'll fi find, find out more about later. Sorry. Um... I actually want to go back and see if some of the moons uh, that I remembered are unlocked now, and I believe they are. Go under here. Yep, this chest is available to open. And we get a moon. <laughs> moons are all over the place. There are a ton of them, like I was saying. Uh, and it's sometimes it's not a challenge to get them. Sometimes it is. The more challenging ones are usually just not necessary at all, and you can beat the game without them. I think it's like... 130 moons to actually beat the game and then like 500 to get the real ending. I'll be going for the real ending. I'm undecided on whether I'll even come close to attempting to 100% this playthrough. Right now, I just want to have fun and show you guys this wonderful game. These things throughout the game, if you see little spinny dolls like that, if you throw your hat on them, it creates platforms and situations where... Uh, well, it basically just leads you to a moon, but it's timed, so you only have a little bit of time to do whatever it is showing you to do. It's not bad. Time runs out, the hat comes off, and the platforms that it creates disappears. And the moon will also disappear if you haven't collected it yet. Um, some moons are just sitting around, nothing guarding them, no puzzles or anything. You can just... They're just yours for the taking. Uh, there are plenty of plenty of moons like that. Uh, not enough that makes it like stupid easy though. Let's talk to Toad here. Hint Toad. Hi Mario. To help out Princess Pe to help out Princess Peach, I'm doing a survey of Power Moon locations. Having trouble finding Power Moons? I can help you for 50 coins. I got 284. Might as well try it just to show uh, what it's like. He puts a marker on the map that hints to you where a power moon can be found at. Uh, for 50 coins, this is useful if you're struggling and only need like one more or missing, you know, just a couple. Uh, but it's not entirely necessary if you're trying to save up coins, which I will most likely be trying to save up coins as much as I can because we're going to need a lot of them um, at some point in the game. I've already got 34 out of 50 of the purple stone discs, I think it called them. <laughs> uh, got everything over here. After you open up, after you beat the uh, story part of a kingdom, uh, which would be that boss that we just did, a lot of things open up in the kingdom. And I don't think <laughs> we'll have time to explore everything this kingdom has to offer. Uh, right up there, we can see another power moon that's just kind of offering itself up for the taking. Um, not hard at all to get. <laughs> just jump up and grab it, which is fine. There needs to be a few like that, but the, maybe it goes a little overboard sometimes. Doors like this can be opened by throwing hats at them. Uh, throwing cappy at them. I don't know why I said throwing hats. Throwing cappy at them. And in here, got a little puzzle. These areas are always cool. Um... Oh god, those things are annoying. I'm trying to see where is the actual power moon. Obviously, we need to take control of the dino man in order to get it. Sometimes doors like this can have two. Actually, a lot of times doors like this can have two power moons. I'm just kind of looking out. 
Ah, uh, okay. That's probably where the second one would be. Let's go ahead and take control of T-Rex here. And, uh... We will go in circles, I guess, looking. I don't remember where they are in this room. I can dash, though. Just step on all these little nuggy goblin things. Ooh. To land on them all ruthlessly. <laughs> Maybe there's only one. I could have swore there was two, though. Okay, let's jump down and find out for sure. There's one right there. Although I feel like there's probably another one I'm missing. Let's run this way and find out. Thing over here? Really? Uh oh, the T Rex is running out of time. And just before I. Oh, there's a little pipe right here. I guess that takes us back up. Indeed, it does. The T Rex automatically respawns, so we can just take control of it, of it again. Oh, I, f I honestly, I feel like there's another moon in here. I am going to break every block until I find it. There's no way it's not... There's no way there's not another moon in here. I feel like most of these doors like that have not Wait a minute. Oh no, I'm stupid. <laughs> I just saw the ground down there again and thought it was another platform. Or another little area. if we jump off of it this way. Ooh. Alright, let's go over to this. This doesn't, if I, yeah, okay, I guess there's not another moon. <laughs> let's collect this one. Dinosaur nest running wild. Um, yeah, whatever. After you take control of an enemy, it will be confused. Or after you capture it, uh, when you release it, it will be confused. Uh, and then after a short bit of confusion, will respawn in its original location. I could have swore there were two in here, but I guess I'm just crazy. Who knows? <laughs> I think I know where one more easy moon location or, e or quick moon location would be. So I'm gonna... What was that? Oh, that thing just rammed its head into the thing. I was like, what's happening? Okay, let's... How do I get up there? Oh, I can show off the speedrunning trick now, I guess, that I was talking about with the dinosaur. Even though I don't need to get to the very top, I can just get to where I need to go. Oh, there's a toad up there. Aw, oh, man, I missed it. Okay, so what we want to do is... Dinosaur. Dinosaurs are a bit finicky to control, if you couldn't tell. Jump on this. Release it at the right time. Dive off. And I missed it. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, I'm not going to go for that again. That was kind of annoying. Actually, you know what? Screw it. Might as well. Might as well. Oh, barely made it. Could have just jumped down from above, I guess, but... Mario, fancy meeting you here. That's right, it's me, Captain Toad. I'm traveling the world looking for power moons. There are so many rare fossils around here. I jumped for joy, but... You know. Oh, I also found a power moon in my search. But you can have it. Captain Toad will pop up in every level in some place or uh, area. Usually a little more difficult to get to. Um... What kingdom do you think I should visit next? All of them! <laughs> he will always give you a power moon. This is looking mighty suspicious over here. Oh, it just does coins. Oh well, not too useless. Definitely not entirely useless. 
Uh, the area behind the waterfall now has things added. Didn't jump off Cappy there. Some currency up here. Oh, whoops. Uh, no, I didn't mean to fall all the way down. But that works out because there's these. Now we're up to 40. Why is there an empty picture frame here? Hmm. Interesting. I'm gonna go ahead and try to get back up to where we were. Didn't mean to fall from up there. After you collect moons, as you just saw right there, they will appear uh, as they were, or in the same place that they were. Uh, just, you know, kind of grayed out. You, just like stars used to be in the other Mario games, or shrines. Um, shrines, shines. Been playing a lot of Breath of the Wild recently. <laughs> mm, let's go over here. Okay, let's not screw this up this time. Maybe there is nothing else over here, actually. It just takes you right back up here. I think. Yeah. Okay. So now we're here. I believe there's something we want to take a look at. Wait. Am I crazy or... Oh, okay. We're good. <laughs> lost my lost my sense of direction for a minute. This was what I was talking about was blocked up uh, the first time. Or was a... Yeah. The, the way to get in here was blocked the first time we came through. There's some coins up here I kind of want to get. Uh, nothing in the back of that. You may think I'm being a little, little extra in my searching for collectibles, but believe me, they are <laughs> hidden everywhere in this game. It, it gets ridiculous at times, like how good some of the hiding places are. Let's go ahead and knock this shell into the blocks and watch it rack up the coins let's go down as far as we can and check to see if there's anything nope and we'll go up as far as we can to check to see if there's anything i am just paranoid that i'm gonna miss something and then i'll have to come back for it later and indeed there were some coins up here <laughs> nothing too important we still get out in the same place uh, tsh, tsh, nothing down there. Go through this. Uh, there's this little section down here. We can go into. We use this Koopa shell, it looks like. And break that block. And there's a little hidden power moon down here. I see, I knew there were two in like most of the little hat doors like that. Most of these hidden areas. The like little puzzles. Uh, don't fall down that because you will die. Um, let's go up here and back to 3D. 2D is better than 3D. But sometimes you just have to go with 3D. <laughs> uh, let's check and see what's going on. I don't think there's anything hidden here. Just to be... Really sure. No, this is the very top. Uh, there is something there, though. Hmm. Wonder what this could be. Oh, there's some currency hidden over here. Okay, so now we're only we only have six uh, purple currency remaining, and we get the moon. Not too shabby, not too shabby. Now that we're up to eight power moons, I think we can get, well, eight power moons in our inventory right now. I believe we can go, oh, I guess these respawn, I didn't know that. I thought they went away forever once you hit them with the hat once. Um, let's go back to the Odyssey. And put them in the Odyssey. As the counter goes up, the uh, sail on top gets larger, and that progresses throughout the game. So you can imagine what it would look like with 999 moons in it. Head off to another kingdom, set sail.
Thank you guys so much for watching. In this episode, we were able to grab a bunch of Power Moons, explore Cascade Kingdom, and actually finish the boss fight there. And we are able to access the Sand Kingdom next time on Let's Play Super Mario Odyssey. That's where we're going to go. Actually, just kidding. Gotcha. We're going to go back to the Cap Kingdom and explore for moons there. And also look around the Cascade Kingdom a little bit more. There is so much to do. I'm going to try to keep a good sense of progression, uh, but also not miss anything along the way. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time.